So this video is a continuation of the last video. What we did last time was we worked an example. We started with a matrix A, three by three matrix, and we did Gaussian elimination on that matrix. We ended up with an upper triangular matrix by Gaussian elimination. And what I showed you was that we can, we can implement the process of Gaussian elimination by multiplying by elementary matrices. So first we multiply A by M1 on the left. M1 says that we keep this, the same first row of A, but then to obtain the second row after the Gaussian elimination step, we multiply the first row by two and add it to the second row. And then the third row is the same. M2 says the first row is the same, the second row is the same, and then we replace the third row by multiplying the first row by one and adding it to the third row. And M3 says the first and second rows are the same, and then we replace the third row by multiplying the second row by minus one and adding it to the third row. So these are the operations of Gaussian elimination represented by matrices. So here we have uh, these operations, first M1, then M2, then M3, acting on A, gives us an upper triangular matrix. We can take inverse matrices now, so all of these elementary matrices are invertible. We multiply on the left by M3 inverse, multiply on the right, on the right of the equation on the left of U by M3 inverse. Then we multiply on the left by M2 inverse and then M1 inverse. So we peel off the M's and then what we end up with is that um, A then is equal to, so the last one is going to be M1. So it will be M1 inverse M2 inverse M3 inverse times U. Okay, remember we do M3 inverse first M2 inverse second, M1 inverse last. So we end up with this. So now the question is, what is M1 inverse, M2 inverse, and M3 inverse? We learned the method for doing inverses, right? You, do, um, you attach the identity matrix to here. We would attach the identity matrix to M1, and then we would do um, bring M1 to uh, reduce row echelon form and we get the identity. That's fine, but that's too complicated. We actually don't have to do that. So if we think what M1 is doing, what is M1 doing? M1 is, the first row is the same. M1 in the, the second row multiplies the first row by two and adds it to the second row. So how do we invert that? How do we invert multiplying the first row by two and adding it to the second row. We multiply the first row by minus two and add it to the second row. Then we should get back what we started from, right? M1 multiplies the first row by two and adds it to the second row. M1 inverse then would multiply the first row by minus two and add it to the second row. You get back where you started. So very easy. So M1 inverse then is just one 0, 0, minus 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay? The inverses of these elementary matrices are trivial. We mathematicians like to use the word trivial. So M2 inverse, right? If I just say, tell you one more time, it's telling us take the first row, multiply by 1, and add it to the third row. So to invert, we take the first row, multiply by minus one, and add it to the third row. And we should get back where we started. So one, zero, 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 one, zero, minus one, zero, one. And then M3 inverse will simply be one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, this is a minus one here, so it becomes a plus one, one. Okay, so that's the inverse matrices.
uh, the computer does it instantaneously, right? All you're doing is changing the sign of the non-diagonal uh, uh, elements. Okay, what's left? This uh, M1 inverse times M2 inverse times M3 inverse also turns out to be trivial. Um, I can do one by hand, so let's do one M1 inverse times M2 inverse, right? So let's see, M1 inverse times M2 inverse. What is that? M1 inverse, one zero zero minus two, one zero, zero zero one. M2 inverse, one zero zero, zero one zero, minus one zero one. Okay, what is this? Well, let's use our matrix multiplication. So one, that's just the uh, row of the identity matrix, right? Minus two plus zero plus zero, that gets a minus two here. Minus two, one, zero, zero, sorry, zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero. And then zero, zero, uh, minus one, right? Zero, 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 one. Okay. Uh, does this look like a simple matrix? Right? This matrix, all we did was we put the minus two here in the same place and the minus one in the same place. So the M1 inverse, M2 inverse is just combining M1 inverse and M2 inverse. So these non-diagonal elements from the identity matrix just go in the same slots, okay? But you put them both in the same slot. So that's very easy. And then it continues like that. So M1 inverse, M2 inverse times M3 inverse is just found by putting all the off-diagonal elements in their slots. So we have 1, 0, 0, minus 2, 1, 0. And then uh, minus 1, and then a 1 and a 0. OK? And this matrix is lower triangular, right? This is a lower triangular matrix. Um, ha. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This spot here is supposed to be from the identity matrix, right? So easy to make a mistake. Here's a one. So this coming from all of the, the numbers on the diagonal coming from the identity matrix. And all we've done is combine these three elements here, the minus two, the minus one, and the one goes right into L, okay? Lower triangular, right? This is a lower triangular matrix. So finally, what do we have here? We have our main result. Uh, let me put it here. We have our A matrix is this M1 inverse, M2 inverse, M3 inverse times U. That's a lower triangular matrix. So we have A equals L U. That's called the LU decomposition of matrix A. Okay? Um, it's just Gaussian elimination. All this is is Gaussian elimination. But it turns out to be a very powerful um, deconstruction of the matrix A, because uh, what we'll see in the next video is, if, is that if you want to solve AX equals B with many different Bs, and a lot of numerical methods have this feature, then if you first find A equals LU and solve LUX equals B, you can do that very fast, much faster than Gaussian elimination. Okay. So to review, we have our matrix A, and we're able, using doing Gaussian elimination on this matrix, representing 
the steps of Gaussian elimination using elementary matrices, we're able to write A equals L times U. L is a lower triangular matrix, U is an upper triangular matrix. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.